contest in the lightweight division. Ages are identical, three inch height advantage for Dion. And basically a half pound heavier at weigh in, not a big deal. One inch reach advantage. I think Dion needs to use every bit of his reach advantage in this fight. Keep Fedor on the outside. Scheduled Four three five-minute rounds. A referee in charge of this bout, Ryan Hoisington. Four of tonight's tilts will be contested over three five-minute rounds, while the women's championship belt will be contested over five five-minute rounds. Three judges will score each bout using the 10-point must system. The winner of each round receives 10 points. The loser, nine or less, scoring is based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and cage control. In strike force, there are no knees or elbow strikes allowed to the head of a grounded opponent. Blue fight, are you ready? Red fight, are you ready? Let's go! Referee is Ryan Hoisington. We are set for three five-minute rounds in the 155-pound weight class. Immediately testing the waters is Fodor. Fodor pushing the fight early against the fence with Dion. Of course, Dion wants to separate, find the range for those unorthodox kicks back. Good job covering the gap. such a short left hook that dropped him both times had to be like three inches to, i mean it was unbelievable and each time beyond was circling that way you know you use the hand they're heading towards that that doubles the impact and watching tape on Fodor, he likes to close the gap work the clinch and then try to take the fight to the ground where he has won all of his fights via guillotine choke right now he is jockeying for position with dion dion looking to clean up the cobwebs early as Fodor continues to deliver small knee strikes to the outside of dion's left leg you know, Dion's done a good job of, of uh, basically catching his breath and, and clearing the cobwebs, definitely being smart here. So an early scare for Tomas Dion seems to have recovered. He's using that chopping right knee to the leg to set up the left knee to the body. Minute and a half gone by in the opening stands up. They exchange knees. When you get into these upper body ties with longer, taller fighters, it can cause you some problems because of their leverage. So you need to be able to work your angles, shut down an arm, use your weight to collapse that arm to make it useless to your opponent. So you can actually lock your arms because of their reach stopping that. Fodor's in a really good position to do a hip toss here if he steps over with that left, left foot in front. Humbling now, and Dion tries to turn the tables. But Fodor sticking to him like a posting mill here early in round one. A nice knee straight up the middle. Short left hand to the face as well. And really, Dion just hanging on here. Now spins Fodor to the fence. Fodor's got the overhook, however. Over under the 50-50 position here. And I think right now, to be honest with you, Dion might be thinking to himself, you know, I'm happy to be here right now because I didn't like getting crammed with the left hooks and getting dropped. Right now, I kind of, maybe he's still trying to clear his cowboy. Dion finally separates. Fodor stops him. Body kick by Dion. Dion with a left. And again, Fodor just closes the gap instantly, looking for the trip takedown, but just presses Dion along the fence again. Fodor kept inside of all those kicks, chasing him down, not letting any distance at all so he can unleash a side kick or a back kick at the ribs. You see a resemblance between pro boxing and this sport. In pro boxing, if you don't have power and a pro boxer recognizes it as your opponent, you're going to get murdered. Uh, I think that Fodor might be recognizing that maybe Dion doesn't have enough power and he's walking right through it and locking up with it. Dion needs to get busier. It's Fodor that even against the fence, trying to maneuver while well. Dion there finally delivers a knee that misses. And it doesn't appear to, to be a pain to look on his face as now they battle for the takedown. It's great finding the legs. And Dion's reach advantage is paying off there. He had double underhooks and had the body lock, but wasn't able to capitalize. There it is. Spinning back kick by Dion. Signs of his sand show background, but Fodor again. Just really irritating, just closing the distance in rapid fashion and frustrating Dion here in the opening round in the final 60 seconds. He's
smothering any of the lengthy offense that Dion might have to offer. I wonder if joining the Marines at 817 made him a little fearless because he looks fearless walking through everything. And if Dion did his homework, and I know he did in studying tape, this is what Fodor likes to do. Likes to close the distance, likes to get into the Greco-Roman clinch and wear down his opponent before taking him to the canvas, looking for that guillotine choke. He does like the plum clinch, which is the double collar tie, but he hasn't even tried for it. Off the level, but Dion thwarts that takedown attempt. Good transition, though, from the failed takedown to the punch and then the knee. Smart fighting. 20 seconds. job in the first round when your opponent circles toward the hand you want to use well that's convenient perfect placement of that left hook right on Dion's chin and dropped it very nice very nice left hook beautiful knee Dion loves the spinning back kick and he just missed the liver with that one that's the intended target with it if you hit the liver clean with your heel with a lot of force well it's not fun for your opponent but it does make a Waffle Boss Rudin smile. <laughs> the bell and round two, some great corner work from Josh Thompson, former Strike Force lightweight champion, telling Dion that while he wants him to be patient, he doesn't want him to wait. And he felt that he allowed Fodor plenty of opportunity to get on track. And you can see the sense now of urgency and uh, a lot more aggression here being exhibited by Dion early in round two. Yeah, but you can see also that he got sucked into the game. There's a gravitational pull for some reason, even if you are a striker, to grab a hold of people. You see it in boxing matches, guys tying up. Uh, it's a hard habit to break. Steven. We've seen Fodor land that left hook at will so far, and he just caught Dion again, and once again finds him pinned along the fence. What does Dion have to do a better job of here in round two to not have the same thing that befell him in round one? Dion's only shot here is to get distance again and to hurt the body with a kick. That's the only thing he can do, because in the clinch or in the short-range uh, punching attacks, he's not going to win this fight because Fodor is the better fighter in those realms and those distances. He needs a long-range fight. He can't win a short-range fight here. He needs to spin away from the fence. He seems content to just get involved in these short exchanges, which really I don't think are doing Dion any favors with Fodor in the position that he's in, Pat. Yeah, as a trainer, you try to teach your fighters a lot of different tricks for staying off the cage and getting off the cage if they end up there. Dion's not really using a lot of them, but Fodor, on, on his credit, is doing a quite a good job of keeping Dion there. Dion with a four inch height advantage, one inch reach advantage, and yet it's been the smaller fighter controlling this contest thus far. Lower center of gravity able to drive people into the cage helps. Uh, that, that happens a lot of times with a shorter fighter. Their lower center of gravity able to push easier. What's going to happen? He's going to chop away with those little annoying right knees to that leg. And eventually, Dion's going to have to bring that leg up to try and block him, and he's going to get taken down. See, here's where Dion, I think, should just separate. But again, Fodor doesn't even give him an opportunity, and they're now jockeying for position. Yeah, Dion needs to go put the thumb inside of Fodor's elbow, push that arm down, be able to slide away from him, cut an angle, whatever he needs to do. But he's not controlling the wrist. He's not doing anything to get away. Um, he's staying clenched up. And there's a right hook by Dion, but Fodor continues to maintain his position. And right now, Fodor is, what we like to say, winning ugly. Yeah, you know, he's pecking away, staying busy. And, and actually, you can see the damage that's being done. Those aren't soft shots, a lot of them. They, they are hurting Dion, you can tell. 
jumping knee. Left kick by Dion, but Fodor comes forward and again just wants to clinch. Gets in the overhook as a left hand. And just pins Dion along the fence. And, and again, if, if you've seen Fodor in action before, drops down and a double leg takedown with authority. Nicely done in a cross side position. And we've seen this before. Not a good place to be with a man here in Stuben, I can tell you. But it's amazing how Fodor's game plans for every fight stay the same, and he's able to uh, pull it off. Well, he fights with only three professional fights, like a guy that's had about 15 or 20 fights, in my opinion. He's very patient. He wore down the defenses of Dion, and now he's going to set him up for that guillotine. Yeah, Dion's in the turtle position, and Fodor going for his uh, quickly becoming a vaunted a guillotine choke. He's going to try to take us back here. Looked like he was thinking about a Peruvian necktie for a second there. Yeah. Now the hammer fist being dropped to the side of Dion's head. Dion just turtling up, trying to absorb all these strikes, and Fodor's strength now putting Dion back on his back. And this is where Dion said he didn't want to be. He learned his lesson in his last fight when he was on the floor with Merrick. He got heel hooked. Knee to the face by Dion holding on for dear life, but again finds himself in a precarious position. Here comes the key lock. Yep. He's got it locked up right away. He took the underhook from him and got it. Going for the far side, Kavora. Dion turns into it, but he still could be in trouble here. Boner hanging on. Final 25 oh, seconds. Oh, wow. mistake of going for the submission and losing position. He could have stayed where he was, I think, and finished that. And it's basic fundamentals position before submission. That's submission 101. As we head into the final seconds of the second round, another round that belongs to Karis Fodor. I can hear you on the... Uh, Relax and breathe. Listen. You see how when he when he didn't stay in the underhook, it was easy to take him down. You got to you got to suck it up and you got to drive into the cage one more time. Good action in the second round. Dion throwing the elbow across, just not quite busy enough. He needs to create more space, create more angles to be able to do that sort of stuff. Here he had a little bit of space through the flying knee that just missed. That's the type of technique that can finish you, but it can't be your bread and butter to finish a fight. Here the key lock by Fodor. You can see how he loses position just to go for the submission. You really don't want to do that, although at the end of the round, it's okay because your opponent doesn't have time to capitalize and put you back in trouble for a long period of time. So technically, that's okay from a coach's standpoint. Dion did a great job. I tell you what, this kid's joints are flexible. A lot of balance, a lot of heart. Came up, got out. Blue ready. Red ready. Let's go. Third and final round fight professor safe to say two rounds to none for Fodor. I'm gonna have to agree with you Morrow and I think the consensus universally will be two rounds for Karras. Uh, Dion has got to hurt him. He's got to hurt the body. It's gonna have to be with a back kick because I don't see any other weapons that he can do that with not the punches for sure because Fodor has no respect for the punch. He's just walking straight in throwing hooks and bombs. Fodor has just one gear that's straight ahead, moving forward again. And uh, do not adjust your sets. This is not a replay. This is the third round, and yet we are seeing exactly what we've seen throughout the first two rounds. Fodor Actually, guys, dominating Dion along the fence. You know, and, and Fodor's getting away with a lot of stuff. Technically, you don't want to lead with your head in boxing or this sport, but he's able to walk in. Dion's not taking advantage of that and landing big right hands and hooks. Spinning hook kick. And there's a crescent kick. Uh, you know, we we're just talking about that kick. Uh, we we're just talking about the crescent kick. It didn't do it, a lot of damage, let's face it. But and he's got to be careful because now I think he's getting desperate. He wants to show off uh, his Sancho background. But at this stage, I mean, he needs to, to really start to, to wear down Fodor and, and go for broke, but with high percentage shots. He's got to show off his ability to make Karras double over 